So this is uh, Inspector Lestrade, Scotland Yard, and the French Connection. As a boy of 12, when I first read the Sherlock Holmes canon, I recall seeing the name of one, one Scotland Yard inspector, Lestrade. What an odd name for an Englishman, I thought. It almost sounds French. And as I got to know Lestrade through the 13 stories in which he appeared, my curiosity continued to grow, and I wondered, just who is this Lestrade, this Scotland Yard inspector with the French-sounding name? In a study in Scarlet, he is described as a little sallow, rat-faced, dark-eyed <laughs> In the Boscan Valley mystery, Watson further paints him as a lean, ferret-like Oh, man, <laughs> furtive and sly looking. Yet, despite his appearance, Holmes, in a study in Scarlet, considers him the best of a bad lot. <laughs> Both quick and energetic, but conventionally shocking, too. And in The Adventure of the Cardboard Box, he allows <laughs> as how, although Lestrade has almost no skill at crime solving, his tenacity and determination are what brought him to the highest ranks in the official police force. <clears throat> it is worth noting that Lestrade's conventional, see I changed it from Lestrade. <laughs> yeah, <we know. laughs> that Lestrade's conventional <clears throat> nature leads him to, let me start that paragraph again. It is worth noting that Lestrade's conventional nature leads him to grow frustrated at Holmes' methods, becoming indifferent and contemptuous of Holmes, particularly in the exploration in the Boston Valley mystery. And in the adventure of the Norwood builder, he claims to be a practical man and dismisses Holmes' apparently <laughs> trifling, in Lestrade's opinion, actions. Nonetheless, as the stories progress, Holmes seems to develop a liking for the man and begins to sh allow the press to credit Lestrade for the, the solution to crimes that Holmes had actually solved. And in The Hound of the Baskerville, Holmes goes so far as to say that he is the best of the professionals, I think. Mm -hmm. For his part, Lestrade, too, seems to develop a feeling of friendship toward Holmes. By the time the hound of the Baskervilles, what other hound is there? The hound of the Baskervilles <laughs> occurs in 1889. Watson notes, from the reverential way in which Lestrade gazed at my companion, that he had learned a good deal since the days when they had first worked together. And in the adventure of the Six Napoleons, which took place in 1900, we learn that Lestrade regularly stops at 221B Baker Street to share the news of the Scotland Yard and discuss cases with Holmes. At the end of that story, he goes so far as to say, we're not jealous of you down in Scotland Yard. No, sir, we're proud of you. And if you come down tomorrow, there's not a man from the oldest inspector to the youngest constable who wouldn't be glad to shake you by the hand. Friendship? Possibly. <laughs> Possibly not. <laughs> Let us consider the French connection. When one investigates the derivation <coughs> of surnames, one discovers that the name Lestrade is indeed French. Lestrade is the name of a village in the Midi Pyrenees region of southwest France near Spain. And Lestrade is a French word meaning the raised platform. It then follows that Inspector Lestrade's antecedents were French, although we don't know how far he, <laughs> how far removed. He already had 20 years in the force when he appeared in a study in Scarlet, which is dated in, as occurring in 1881. So he was probably born sometime in the mid 1830s. Therefore, either he was born in France and emigrated at an early age, or his family may have come to Great Britain in the late 1700s. This then begs the question, were Lestrade's allegiances French or British? 
consider the behavior in the following cases. His behavior in the following cases. In the adventure of the noble bachelor, Lestrade is out dragging the serpentine for the body of the missing bride while Holmes solves the case, proving said bride, Hattie Doran, alive and well. The noble bachelor, Lord Robert Walsingham de, de Vere St. Simon, had Plantagenet ancestry, <clears throat> thus a connection to France. Perhaps Lestrade's actions were deliberately designed to lead away from St. Simon through a misguided sense of loyalty, loyalty toward his French ancestry. In the adventure of the second stain, the blackmailer Eduardo Lucas, a.k.a. Henry Fournier, kept a second home in Paris. Lestrade arrested Lucas's wife for his murder, and because of his French sympathies, had he located the missing document, might have placed it in the hands of the French authorities. Fortunately, Holmes deduced where the document was and returned it to the British government, thus preventing European complications of the utmost moment. The Hotel du Louvre in Paris is the mailing address for the international agent Oberstein. The missing three plans for the Bruce Partington submarine were placed in his hands for sale to the highest bidder on the continent. Lestrade was content to capture Colonel Valentine Walter, who stole the plans originally, rather than pursue the case to the logical conclusion. Was this in the hopes that the French might be the successful bidder for the plans? Napoleon Bonaparte was idolized by legions of French people while alive. Indeed, with his passing, many thought wistfully that it might of what might have been. The stray, French in inclination, if not birth, did his best to obfuscate Holmes in the adventure of the six Napoleons. In <clears throat> insisting at first that the person smashing the busts of Napoleon had an obsessive and irrational, in Lestrade's opinion, hatred of the emperor. Unable to divert Holmes from his investigation, Lestrade then focused on the murder of an Italian on the doorstep of Horace Harker, a newspaper columnist who coincidentally also owned a bust of Napoleon, which equally <laughs> equally coincidentally, was smashed. <laughs> it might be thought that Lestrade was fixated on diverting Holmes from concentrating his efforts on the destroyed busts of the French Napoleon. The question arises in the disappearance of Lady Carfax. Just what was Lestrade's involvement in causing the warrant to open the coffin of Rose Spender, for whom they chloroformed Lady Frances for whom the chloroformed Lady Frances was substituted that evening to be delayed until the following day. The connection is that Lady, France, Lady Carfax's maid lived in Montpelier, France, and by now we know that Lestrade is sympathetic to anyone with or associated with a French background. And at the end of the story, the villains have di disputed, no, departed with Lestrade, supposedly in hot pursuit, but did they, did they catch him? We don't know. And then there's the Italian connection. When researching the origins of surnames, one also finds a branch of the Lestrade family in Italy. In Italian, La Strada means the street. A lesser case could be made for Inspector Lestrade being sympathetic toward Italy. Lestrade's ancestors may have come from Italy and originated as street people. Presumably, the family came to England in the late 1700s and managed to better themselves in such a manner. <clears throat> I should have worn my glasses. <laughs> in such a manner that one of the younger and more promising list, uh, Lestrades became a Scotland Yard detective. In the adventure of the six Napoleons, an Italian, an Italian, Beppo by name, breaks 
into various homes, seemingly to destroy the homeowner's bust of Napoleon. Lestrade theorizes that someone with an intense hatred of Napoleon is loose on the streets of London. During a break in break in at the home of journalist Horace Harker, a member of the mafia, one Pietro Benucci is stabbed to death by the Italian named Beppo. Mm -hmm. Throughout the story, Lestrade persists in trying to mislead Holmes away from the logical motive for the destruction of the Napoleon busts. It is only when Holmes dramatically reveals that Beppo was after the stolen black pearl of the Borgias that Lestrade is forced to agree with him. Now let us consider the Napoleon of crime. Thus far we have looked at Lestrade. Pedestrian, ordinary, furtive, ferret-faced, unimaginative, <laughs> yet considered by Holmes as the best of the professionals. We have also examined the possibilities of Lestrade being loyal to interests either in France or Italy. But if we step back and broaden our focus, another possibility comes to light. Might Lestrade, with more than 40 years with Scotland Yard, by the time of the adventure of the three derivatives in 1902 be working for Professor Moriarty. <laughs> at this point, you're probably thinking, but Professor Moriarty met his end at Reichenbach Falls at least 10 years before the adventure of the three derivatives. How could it be that Lestrade continues to report to him? Statistically, since 1989, there have been an average of 1,802 sets of triplets born in the United States. <laughs> born in the United States each year. Of these, 150 per year were identical triplets. <laughs> Assuming Professor Moriarty was one of a set of identical triplets, <laughs> then he looked exactly like his two brothers. Colonel Moriarty, who wrote angry letters to the press at Professor Moriarty's alleged demise at Reichenbach, and the station master Corey Moriarty from the south of uh, England. Bearing in mind that Sherlock Holmes saw Professor Moriarty only once, as described in the final problem, it would be understandable if the Moriarty he encountered at the Reichenbach Falls was not the professor, but one of his identical triplet brothers. <laughs> and it would be very logical for the professor to substitute his brother, the station master, who was in better physical condition from handling the luggage at the railroad station, <laughs> for himself, thus increasing his chances of defeating Sherlock Holmes once and for all. <clears throat> In his actions, <clears throat> if his actions were deliberate and well thought out attempts to further the interests of his employer, Professor Moriarty, he who sits like a spider in the center of his criminal web, seeming every, sensing every vibration throughout. Sometimes Lestrade's efforts succeeded as in the adventure of Lady Carfax. Sometimes they failed, as in the adventure of the six Napoleons. But for a deeply embedded mole to be effective, he must remain employed by the enemy. His value, his true value, is in providing a constant source of information to his employer. Success or failure of individual criminal endeavors along the way is incidental. As a continuing source for Moriarty of the intentions of Scotland Yard and Sherlock Holmes, the value of Lestrade as a mole is priceless. And what about Sherlock Holmes? Would he be aware that Lestrade was Moriarty's mole? Of course he would. And typically, he would use his knowledge for his own purposes. What better way to be aware of the intentions of a criminal mastermind than to have a working relationship with a mastermind's mole? From Lestrade's behavior and attitude, Holmes could extrapolate Moriarty's present and future intentions and continue to thwart the professor in his criminal endeavors. And no doubt, he continues to do so. Thank you. Wow.